morning, everybody. Good morning, it's JPR, and today, I gotta set the record straight. Ever since Pokemon Sword and Shield came out, I've seen nothing but a barrage of hate from my man, Hop. And I just had to wonder, why? Did y'all just mash the A button and not read any of the text in this entire game? And then I started seeing all kinds of dudes saying Hop is the worst Pokemon rival. Like, hold up, hold up. There's a lot of bad Pokemon rivals. Surely you don't mean to tell me that Hop is the worst of them all. Now, I do understand some of the popular complaints, like Hop shows up to Batigo too much. He has reused animations from How. His team is often underleveled and really easy to beat. I get that. I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm just saying that he's actually a pretty great rival. And I'll tell you why in three simple points. Point number one, Hop actually tries to get stronger. What if I told you that Hop actually has more in common with Blue than most of the friendly rivals? All the friendly rivals do the same thing. They challenge you to a battle, get handed the L, and then proceed to come back and do the same thing over and over, rinse and repeat until the end of the game. Is that or is that not the definition of insanity? But Hop is the first rival since Blue to actually change his Pokemon lineup and attempt to get stronger. We all know the story with Blue. You beat him on the SSN and the Gen 1 games and his eradicate. Obviously doesn't die. This is a kid's game, and plus I only use Bubble Bee for crying out loud. So as Raticate hits the bench and gets replaced by a mix of either Gyarados, Execute, or Growlithe, depending on who his starter was. Now Blue was no slouch. He knew well what he was doing, as all three of these Pokemon help him accomplish his goal, of becoming the ultimate trainer, far better than Raticate would. Now in Hop's case, he starts the game with a pretty cookie cutter team: Wooloo, Rookadee, and his starter Pokemon. But about halfway through the game, things change a lot for Hop. He gets beaten badly by Bead and feels like he's not keeping up with you and the rest of the competition. He doesn't just say he wants to get stronger, he acts on it. In the next battle, he uses Cremorant, Toxel, and Silicobra. He replaced his freaking pal Wooloo for god's sake. Probably wasn't an easy decision, but he wanted to get stronger. Then he loses again, and his team goes through a second reshuffling. Bam! Now he's packing Trevenant, Heatmore, Snorlax, and Boltund in addition to his starter, a fully evolved team of decently powerful Pokémon. In case you're keeping track, that's five Pokémon he's replaced so far. The only other trainer I can think of who even comes close to that number is Paul. Paul from the anime, and I doubt anyone would call him a bad rival. Then you see Hop again after he loses the sixth gym battle. He realizes that his attempts to get stronger aren't working, so he goes back to basics. He brings back his original team plus Snorlax and Pincurchin in an attempt to make things work. It's almost like an Ash Ketchum moment. Hop has combined the trust he had in his original team with a bit of the brute force brought by his newer teams. And this is the team he sticks it out with for the rest of the game. Kudos to you, Hop. You actually got out there and experimented. You didn't just say you wanted to get stronger, you actually went and did it. Point number two, Hop has emotions. Remember how we mentioned earlier how Hop shares some of the same animations with Hal from the Alola games? Well, other than maybe a little bit of laziness from Game Freak, I feel like this was done intentionally. In the first five minutes of the game, you're being shown that Hop acts a lot like Hal. He's constantly cheerful, he's energetic, and most importantly, he's living in the shadow of a successful family member. For Hal, it was his grandfather, the island Kahuna, which was already a lot to live up to. But for Hop, it's his brother, the undefeated champion of Galar, that's an entirely different league of Intimidation. It doesn't seem to affect him too badly in the beginning of the game, but again, there's a turning point where Bede defeats Hop and outwardly tells him that he's dragging Leon's name through the mud. Hop gets called garbage to his face, and it really messes with him. He goes through some depression for a bit afterward as he shuffles his team around. Hop stops acting like Hop. On top of that, the league is drawing near, and he's getting left in the dust by the other trainer endorsed by his brother, you. Eventually, Hop's confidence starts to come back towards the end of the game once he gets settled on his final team in Surchester. You notice that in Hop's last couple battles, his animations are incredibly different. He's more focused and reserved than he used to be. And when he loses to you in the league, he's visibly upset. There's salt pouring out from everywhere. If he was a Smash Bros player, he'd throw his GameCube controller here and never take another shower for the rest of his life. Hop is a character that we get to see at the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. He arguably shows more emotion than any other character from Pokemon. This is how a real person would react to adversity and having their dreams crushed. And number three, Hop never stops growing. After losing the league, Hop understandably feels a bit depressed again. He doesn't know what goals to pursue in life. In the postgame, he gets handed another tough loss from Swordward and Shieldbert. And I think I would probably retreat from society if I lost someone who looked as ridiculous as them too. At first, he feels like he shouldn't even help with a Dynamax Pokemon crisis because he feels like a burden. But he sticks it out because he wants to help Zacian and Zamazenta. And his bravery is eventually rewarded with him gaining the trust of the remaining legendary Pokemon, and it becomes his new partner. But even with a legendary Pokemon by his side, Hop accepts that he'll never be able to live up to you or his brother and decides to pursue a new goal of becoming a Pokemon professor. 
His story ends similar to Bianca from Black and White, another rival who accepted the truth that not everyone is meant to be an expert battler. And I hope that similar to Bianca, we get some kind of follow-up to Sword and Shield. We do get to see Hop succeeding as a new professor someday. And that's it, those are the three reasons why I think Hop is actually one of the best rivals in the Pokemon series. I do think a couple of Hop's encounters could have been replaced by either Bead or Marnie, just because I wanted to see them get more overall screen time and development, and yeah, Hop is a relatively easy rival to beat, although I think that's more of an issue with the game itself. Aside from Leon, I didn't really struggle with any of the trainers in this game. Anyway, that's it for me. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this one, and I'll see you guys next time.